God is worthy of the praise. Yes, he is. I'm excited just to be alive today. I'm not thinking about any issues. I'm not thinking about any anything going wrong, anything going good. I'm just excited to be alive. If you're excited to be alive today, somebody shout hallelujah. The enemy ought to hear us just yell like we had a basketball game. Like we had a football game. Forget about all the dignified, you got to be dignified, we in church, we in a building. Let go and let go. I'm a man, I put my pants on just like most of you. Let go, let God. Just have fun. It's a beautiful thing to be in the house of the Lord and to have fun. To be in the house of the Lord where a blessing is waiting on you. The blessing is up here. Because the Bible says in Psalms 133, life forevermore is in the house. Amen. This is why we come together. Yes. This is why we wake up and we don't stay home. Yes. But this is why we come into the house because it's a blessing here. Yes. And it's life forevermore, eternal salvation. Yes. It's a blessing here. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. And I promise you, if you will change the way that you think, yes. your yes. mind will change, your life will yes, change. Will. Yes. But I must get you to change the way you think first. Amen. And it'll happen with the Word of God. Not because of Pastor Mike, what I believe, Amen. what I think, but it's what the Word of God says. Amen. So I'm going to give you a scripture let you take the seat of the day. We're going to be talking about prayer. Amen. Prayer. Amen. We're going to be talking about positive prayer. Amen. Positive prayer, when I was on that plane and I felt some things happen, I began to say, God, yes. not my wife, I didn't say one word to her, not my children who went in front and back, not my granddaughter, not any of them, but I began to say, in the name of Jesus, yes. Yes. Father, I command this plane to land and land safely. Yes. You see, I believed in the words that were coming out of my mouth, and I was talking to my father. Yes. I didn't need to talk to my wife or the, yes. or, or the man driving the plane, the pilot. Yes. I didn't need to talk to him. Yes. He you. couldn't do nothing for me. That's right. That's right. But my Lord and Savior, the one that yes. has all the control in his hands. Yes. I said, Father, land this plane safely yes. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And my son Chris said, did you see all the thunder and lightning around us looking out the window. You're in harm's way and don't even realize it sometimes. Sitting in this church, you could be in harm's way. The That's enemy right. don't care nothing about our That's physical right. That's right. That's right. danger sometimes, but he That's care right. about the mental. Yeah. If he can get inside your mind yep. and cause you to believe that he don't like you, she don't like you, the pastor don't like you, if he can get inside your mind to yeah. get you to believe that my life is just stuck yeah. and this yeah. is just the way I'm going to be. Yeah. That's right. That's how it starts, right there. The battle is here. Amen. In the mind. Yeah. The battlefield is here. But we serve a God that's greater. We serve a God that has it all in his hands. We serve a God that says, greater is he that is in who? Me. You, me, yeah. than he that is in the world. Amen. So open up your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2, 21. 1 Peter chapter 2, 21. For God is worthy to be praised. Yes. God is worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. Oh, I love him because he's just God. I don't love him because of anything he, he'll ever do for me. But I love him because he's just God. First Peter chapter 2, 21st verse. First Peter chapter 2, 21. And it is a blessing to see everyone in here. If you are a first-time visitor, I thank God for you. I decree blessings in your life. Amen. I decree safety in your life. Amen. I decree in the name of Jesus by yes. the blood that prevailed on Calvary. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you right now for thank safety. I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for every individual in here, Lord Jesus, that their mind, the blindness will come off. The enemy will have no place. You're in this service right now. He will, he must go. He won't have you thinking about dinner. He won't have you thinking about who's running after you. He won't have you thinking about the person beside you, whether or not they, they looking at your clothes, thinking, why you didn't dress like me? He won't have it. In the name of Jesus. He won't have it. Why they have on a t-shirt and I don't. He won't have it. That's right. Amen. 
Before service is over, if you want a t-shirt, I want you to see Lady Monique, which is my, please come up here, beautiful woman of God, because some the first time don't know you. Fresh off of the flight from Florida. <laughs> and we had a wonderful, beautiful time. We left and came back loving the Lord, loving each other. But if you need a t-shirt, we're getting ready to order what we don't have. I want you to see Lady Monique. If you're not a member of this church and you want a t-shirt, you see Lady Monique. I'm tired of this sanctified social club. Thank you, God. Well, you can have this Thank if you're not a member. The devil is a lie. That's right. If you want to put on new generation shirt, That's right. Amen. you see Lady Monique after service. Amen. And we're going to make sure you get a t-shirt. Amen. At the appointed time. And we typically wear these on the third Sunday. This is sort of like our dress down day. We tell people you don't have to put your high heel shoes on if you don't want to. You don't have to put your wig on if you don't want to. Just come on in the church. The best way that you can. Put your NGC shirt on. Come on into the house. Amen. But see her. If you need a t shirt in the name of Jesus, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Amen. It's going to happen. Thank you, love. It's going to happen. God is good. But we will not allow the enemy to have you thinking anything else because in the name of Jesus, I command this service, Father, to go according to your plan. Kingdom-minded folk here today. Here to push forth the word of God. Yes, Lord. Here to expand your kingdom yes. in this land because you said it's your desire that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. So we understand your word. We believe your word. And it's up to us to have the heaven's doors open so that heaven can be here in our lives Amen. on earth. Yes. Not when we get to heaven. The Bible wasn't put here to teach her how to live in heaven. The Bible was put here to teach all of us how to live on earth. Amen. And the Amen. Bible was put here to teach us and show us that if we want heaven here on earth, lay on it, you two going to have to go to the back. Everybody's listening to you. Just go ahead. Right here. In the name of Jesus. See, I purposely do things. I stepped over here so you all wouldn't be over there. But it wasn't working. She was trying to get her point across. That young girl was like, no, I'm going to tell you, y'all, y'all, you got to listen. This is what's happening. That's how children are. <laughs> but in the name of Jesus. So you have to, in your life, you have to command and control That's your right. life. Say amen. That's right. That's right. It's so important. I can take little things like that and use in your life, in the word of God, and everything about you, when all disaster, when chaos is around you, you must control it. You see, from the time we left here, Ronald, Virginia, the plane was late getting here. We didn't leave till a few hours later. From the time we got to Florida, where we were staying, which was not cheap at all, just to put you in the mindset, so some of you all will understand, not to brag and boast, but so you'll understand, we're staying in a place that we're paying almost $4,000 for the week. Not four hundred. I want to put your mind there. And I promise you, the enemy wanted me to come out of sorts and everybody else because it was just totally a disaster. Somebody has taken advantage of folk, been there five years ago, wonderful place. But the house just had been run down. So you can't believe everything you see on the internet. From the time to that to other situations, to coming home, the plane was late. And we still said, all of us, we were texting all through the night, and I'm saying, when are these young men going to stop texting because it's late? And I keep hearing it 12, 1, 2 in the morning. We had a wonderful trip. We had a beautiful trip, the best trip we've ever had. You see, it's not about everything being right in your life to, to, to love God and to know that everything is well, but it's knowing that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord that are called according to his purpose. So in spite of what the enemy throws at you, I serve a God that said, I'll lift up a standard against the enemy when he comes in as a flood. Yes, 
Yes. 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 When it yes. seems like all your problems are just sitting on your, your lap. And I'm going to say the scripture so some of you can rest off your feet. Because somebody was thinking like, is, this, is he going to keep it? <laughs> I just believe in being honest. First Peter chapter 2, the 21st verse says, for, for to this you were called because Christ also suffered for us. Leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. You may take your seat. Glory be to God. It's time to change the way that you think if you want to see your life being changed. Your life will not change because you get married. Your life will not change because you get a great job. Your life will not change because an inheritance will be left to you. Your life will not change because you just show up Sunday morning on church and sit here. But I'm going to talk about something today called, do you know Jesus? Do you really know Jesus? Or do you just know about him? Do you know who he is or have you heard a lot about him? A lot of times we profess that we truly know the Lord. And I today I'm going to try to open up your mind. And it's a self-examination. It's not about what I feel about you. It's not about how I feel about whether you get to church on time, whether you come here on Sundays, Wednesdays. Uh, it's not about how much work you do in the church. It's not about how much money you give to the new generation. It's truly about do you really know him? Mm -hmm. I, I want to give you a definition of what it means to know. The word know. K-N-O-W. It means that you have developed a relationship based on meetings, talking, spending time with one another. Can you sit here today and tell me that you spend time with Jesus? Amen. And I mean spend time because trust me, in order to get to know Lady Monique, I had to spend some time. I had to put some time in. I had to do some things so that she felt like, oh, you really do want me. I had to bring her flowers on days. I had to bring her chocolate on days because she loved candy. You see, sometimes she'd rather have candy instead of have some roses. Probably the majority of the time. But I took time to learn what she liked. A lot of times we don't take time to learn folks. And we just think, well, because I'm this way, you should be this way. No, if you really love someone, you will take time to learn what they like, what they don't like. Amen. Amen. Well, the amens I get for that in the physical is the same way it is with Jesus. Amen. You'll get to know what Jesus like and what he don't like when you spend time with the Lord. When you put aside all the other stuff, because as we talk in this message one of the things I want you to think about as well is, is do we not have enough time to pray? Come on now. Or do we just don't have the desire to pray? Come on, who A lot of times we say, well, I just don't have time. Because one thing I found, desire means it's something you really want to do. I have a desire to wash my car. I have a desire to... Not all, of us, not all of us want to go to work, but I have a desire <laughs> to buy clothes. I have a desire to, to just do things that make me feel good. Well, some of the words we're going to talk about today, one of the words is delight. In Psalms 37, we're going to go there at some point, when we delight in the Lord, it means that you love the Lord. The Word of God just empowers you. The Word of God just gives you meaning. You just love the Word of God. Amen. So when you delight yourself in something, you see, I delighted myself in Lady Monique at some point, and I still delight myself. Don't get me wrong. But when I was trying to get her, you see, a lot of times we'll spend more time trying to get somebody than keeping them. So you accept Christ today, and then you just kind of say, well, it's okay. I don't have to really do all of that. I'm saved. Oh, yes, you are saved. Because once you ask Christ to come into your life, and I invite anyone right now, if you want to accept Christ in your life, and I, I may ask this a couple more times. And one thing you'll learn is that folk don't want to come to the front by themselves. You may be sitting there thinking, man, I really want to go there. Whew. I take my hat off to the mom and daughter that's here again today that came up 
last Sunday. And they joined this ministry. You see, it's something about having somebody with you. And, and, and here we go. The scriptures that we're getting to today, if the, the Lord says so, is even Jesus took his, his boys, his posse, his disciples with him. And he said, watch while I pray. He took his, and he had folk with him. It's okay. I get it that you want somebody with you. But God is looking for some bold soldiers. Somebody that's willing to step out of God is walking with me. If I can't get in touch with my boy, my girl, my mom, my dad, my cousin, my pastor, guess who's walking with me? The Lord. I have Jesus with me. When nobody else is show up, when nobody is around, I have somebody named Jesus. I have my Father, which are in heaven. And consecrated is thy name. Thy name is higher than any other name you'll ever put inside your mouth. Out of all the different prophets in the world, none of them said Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad. Out of all the other different prophets, none of them said they were equal to God. Only one. Jesus said, I am God. Amen. So when folk try to tell you, well, what's the difference? It's only one. Amen. Only one. That said, the Father, I am him. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's so important to know who your father is. If I was to ask my sons here, who am I? They could tell you quite a bit about me, whether it be good or bad. Whether it be about a temper, whether it be about being pleasant, whether it be about I'm generous. They would tell you quite a bit because they know me. Do you know Jesus today? Can you give me a resume about Jesus? And I'm going to show you the difference here. You can stand here, most of you, and tell me that, well, I know that he is God. I know that he healed folk. I know that he delivered folk from leprosy. I know that he did things from, from healing blood diseases. I know that he brought Lazarus back from the, from the dead. I know, I know he fed thousands of people. I know, I know you can tell me a lot about him. Let me show you the difference. I said you could tell me a lot about him, but that doesn't mean you know him. I'm going to break it down. I want somebody to leave here today with being able to apply this to your life today. Do I have a relationship with him? You see, some of you could tell me about Michael Jordan that's in the sports that he had so many championships. Uh, he got this many children. He's been married this many times. You can tell me, you know, how many points. I mean, some of you can give me the stack, all the stacks. You know about him. But you don't know him unless you have a personal relationship with him. And he lets you truly spend time and get to know him. Well, I want you today to stop telling folk that you know him if all, only you know about him. I, I want to push you to know him today instead of just knowing about him. Knowing about all the things that he did. I want you to know what he can do in your life. I want you to know that he can change your life. I want you to know that if you walked in here with cancer, he can heal you of cancer. I want you to know that if you walked in here with diabetes, he can heal you of diabetes. I want you to know if you're walking here with a mind issue, that he can heal that mind issue. That's when you begin to know him. And you, you can tell folks, this ain't about just knowing who he is. This is about knowing him. I know him because when the doctor said Pastor Mike would live to be two, I'm here today. Amen. Amen. When many other things that have happened and come upon my life, I'm here to tell you that I know him because I've spent some time with him. I get to know him through his word. It's not through it, it's not just through prayer, but it is prayer, but it's prayer and his word. And I'm gonna attempt to show you that through the prayer, through prayer in our life, it's time to change, church. If no other church is preaching this, and they may be, new generation gotta keep pushing. Your prayer life must increase. Amen. Your prayer life must increase. Why? Because Jesus prayed. Why? Because Jesus knelt on the ground. Why? Because you're going to see where that when he was baptized. Yes. The word of God says that all the folk were baptized and Jesus being baptized 
and praying the heavens opened up. Amen. And praying. So you're going to go through situations. But and praying must be part of whatever you do. I was working and praying. I was being cussed out and praying. You see, it ain't all about everything going well. It, it's, a, it's about wherever these feet are. Yes, yes. And praying must be part of your life. Yes. I was getting paid and praying. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and some people might find this to be a little controversial, but I was doing something I shouldn't have been doing. And praying. Yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> See, some of these sanctified folk has been saved and, and they feel like they don't want to know right and wrong in the Bible. That you don't know you can't pray to God. And, no, let me tell you something. You better be praying. That's right, huh? God, forgive me. God, whatever it is, God, cure my prayer. God, I need you right now. Don't ever allow the enemy to make you feel like that you're not worthy. That it doesn't make sense to pray because it don't make sense to go to church on Sunday because last night I was, or this morning I was, the devil is alive. Yes, right. The only way you're going to ever get the word of God, you need to be in the house. You're not going to get it laying with boo-boo. You're not going to get it in the club. You're not going to get it chilling. You're not going to get it at home smoking one. Oh, it's legal. <laughs> well, I'm just reading. Pastor Mike tells you just the way it is. I ain't got time to throw the, you know, I'm going to tell you how to apply that to you now, today. I need folks sitting in my church that ain't right. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor Mike. Amen. I ain't got time to preach to a bunch of folks that's sanctified and I can't tell them nothing. Hey, hey, hey. Say, I mean, you know, we got every eye dotted, every T cross. We're just waiting on God to bring you to heaven, <laughs> Give me a church of some people that's like, look, I walked in the door and I ain't all straight. Oh, I'm going to love on you. I'm going to hug you. I'm going to tell you that God is. I'm going to tell you he's the one that can. I'm going to tell you that in spite of what the world is telling you, that, oh, you ain't no good. You ain't never been no good. It just ain't going to be nothing. I'm going to tell you that you are something in Christ. The Bible Amen. tells me I can do all things through who? Christ. Christ. That's where my strength coming from. It's not from a man, not from a paycheck, but my strength coming from the Lord. My strength coming from somebody that is supernatural, somebody that's sent high, but it says he looks low. Amen. And the reason why he looks low because he knew little Michael would be there hearing Michael's problem. Michael thought they were great, but God said, man, really. I don't even have to blink for that to happen. Come on now. <laughs> you think it's great, but it's nothing to me. Amen. So follow him. I'm going to read the scripture again so that uh, somebody here can, can stay with me here. For to this you will call because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. I thought about the step thing. And I thought about when it snows, and a daddy or mama or whatever is walking, making footsteps, and you have a child behind you, these grandchildren or your child, what they'll do, they'll try to step in your step without getting out of it. And there's something about that that I want to apply to your life today. When they're stepping in your step, they're so focused on just the next step they're not focused on 10 steps later. They're concentrating on, I gotta, and balancing themselves. Mm, I did it. And they're excited about just that one step. They're so focused on staying in your step. What Jesus just said, follow me in my steps. Amen. You must take in your life, whatever you're dealing with, one step at a time. Amen. You must focus on one step at a time. And the one thing that I noticed when the, the step, like in the snow, that child, because your steps on your stride is longer, that child has to stretch. In your life, you're going to have to stretch and have a leap of faith. 
You're not going to see it. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that, oh, no, I'm just going to be stuck right here for the rest of my life. But faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. you got to believe it, baby, when you don't even see it. you got to believe it no matter what the enemy is throwing at you. you got to believe it in what your family is saying. you got to believe it in spite of what some of the people in the church are saying. When you take that step, T, T E A, time, energy, and attention. You put time, energy, and attention to just that step. I'm not worried about where I'm going to be next year. I'm not worried about making sure my business is here next year, but I'm worried about right now, baby, because you might not see next year. But I serve a God. Then he said, just take one step at a time. Follow me. Follow me. And one of the things that following him that's so important is prayer. Amen. Oh, yeah. Some of you might have thought I was went somewhere else, but prayer. That's what we're talking about today, positive prayer. Amen. How do I get positive prayer in my life? By one step at a time, not thinking about what is going to happen tomorrow, but one step at a time. Father, I believe you because you said it. Mm-hmm. Because you said it. I believe you. Because the pastor spoke, and I, I, I believe the word came through him into my life. He imparted a, a, a word, a, a life-changing word. He imparted a word to give me hope that my life will change if my mind changes. If my mind changes, my life will change. Unacceptable for you to ever tell me, well, my mind changed, but my life still the same. That's a lie. Where your mind goes, you will follow. So is it that I don't have time to pray? Or is it that I don't have the desire to pray? And if I have the desire to pray, I promise you, you will get to know who Jesus is. 